Hey, that tells you when. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're live. We're live. I was just explaining the ins and outs to. Uh, when it says live, 0.16778 seconds. We've been live for eight seconds. That's and correct. I'm dribbling already. <laughs> That's correct. Hello, everybody. Right, here we are. Sunday evening. Sunday evening. Super Scott. sun shining yet again. Thank goodness. Far too hot for the doggy. Bit warm for me. Bit of a burnt face We've this both, week. We've got a bit too much sun, but. Good evening, all. Evening, evening. Nice to see you. To Sunday see you. Evening. Nice, in the words of a true Englishman. Indeed. With a Scottish name. With a late, a late Englishman. I <laughs> uh, hope everyone's got a nice glass. Uh, because it's all about the home nation. The home nations, the home nations. our nations. homelands. Who would have ever thought that we could produce wine? Quite. And wine that's particularly good. W wine that can is produce actually award-winning these days. You think of the number of times we have people come to our stand at events and they say... Actually, I, we they make got, wine. Oh, you guys got English wine. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking British do, wine. Talk about the people who come up and say, "Oh, yeah, we 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 we, we make wine at home." Actually, it's like we, we make it out of blackberries. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's gonna be, let's not go too, it's too far into this. Grapes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, cheers, welcome everyone. Sunday welcome evening. everybody. Happy happy nice day. to see you on a lovely sunny evening once again. Finn says hi. He's very happy to be here. No incidents. It was this time last week, wasn't it? The no, it was two weeks ago. Was it two weeks? Two weeks ago. No, last week was me bitten. I got steamrolled by the dog last week. Oh, that's Ended right, up yeah. at St. George's Tooting. So uh, no dog-related incidents this week, actually. Thank no, goodness. Good dog boy. It's bloody liability. No idea how expensive this dog costs us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Suzanne Morgan, Michelle Clark, Luke Portnow. Evening all. Evening, nice evening. to see you all. Please... Comment, let us know that you're there. Otherwise, if you don't if you don't send a comment, we don't know you're there. Send us a wave. Uh, it's that time on, on a Sunday again. Yeah. Uh, doesn't that come around quick, eh? Wine o'clock. <laughs> you'd argue it doesn't come around quick enough, actually. <laughs> I felt like that today. I was definitely ready for a glass. I'm very happy I am too. Well, I do feel a little bit guilty, actually, about, about pulling people away from the sunshine. But no doubt, yeah. no doubt. Everybody has been fried this week. Well, from what I've seen out about, people have been in the sunshine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The Ron Conchers are here. Hi, Ron Conchers. Good evening, Leo. Um, welcome all. Welcome all. Tim Carter. Hi, Finn. Finn, say hi to Tim. Oh, sorry. Oh, hang on. <laughs> hi, Tim. Oh, <laughs> he's so tolerant. So, no, what are we talking about? Well English, Scottish, Welsh. But not British. We'll come to that. Very important. Evening, uh, Swiping Woodsy. So um, what is all this about England? Well, we actually... I and all it, these plaudits that they keep binning. I think it might have been actually Tim Carter, who, when we put the question out there, if anybody's got anything in particular they want to chat about wine-wise, let us know. And English came up and we thought, well, why not? It's why a not? big hot topic at the moment. And why not? what with the wonders of global warming... Um, it will get hotter and hotter. So anybody who's actually got the, themselves a, a bottle of uh, Davenport, that's what we're drinking this evening, from the lovely Mr. Will Davenport down in Kent and West, uh, East Sussex. Uh, it doesn't matter if you haven't got it, but uh, those who have, enjoy it. You'll see, I hope you've got it nice and chilled. Yeah. You'll see how deliciously full-bodied it is with still the freshness and the nice acidity. And that acidity is coming through. But, but not in a really harsh way. And that's really down to what's going on up there at the moment. And I suppose that's really what we've got to talk about. Why, why is it that we're making really good wine now? Why? Well, there's a few elements, aren't there? I mean, it's um, that. It is that thing up there. <laughs> and I was always said, we always ask people, you know, what does it take to make wine? What do you need? Is that grapes? Yeah, you need grapes. Sunshine, sunshine, mm. uh, that's an element that's out of our control. Yep. Uh, uh, soil, well, yep. you plant where the soil is right. Yep. People, that's, Bit of also, human intervention. that's also an important factor. So the knowledge is uh, key. Is getting better and better. Yeah. People yeah. are learning and, and also people are coming in from other countries and, and bringing their expertise, snapping up land, bringing their expertise snapping and producing some top quality yeah. wines. Yeah. But, but we're really talking about literally only in the last 20 years has anybody started seriously taking or was taking taking wine from the UK, I'm not going to say Britain, uh -huh. um, the UK seriously and particularly England. Um, but that's not to say that we weren't producing wine a long time before that, but it was just pretty, I mean, paraffin. Plonko, plonko, plonko. And Jude's going to tell you actually how many vineyards there are in England. 
Yeah, so um, in recent years, it's grown massively. But, you know, in the last few years, rough, like let's, these figures are probably from 2018. Um, but you're looking at in England, it's around about 450 vineyards. And in Wales, in Wales 20, 17. Oh, I was going to say 25. No, 17. Okay, okay. There's a few dotted around in Scotland. Um, none probably particularly commercial for there's, reasons. There's, there's, there's one or two. Uh, I've just done a little sort of bit of oh, research. Okay. There's, there's, a, there's a chateau, would you believe, up in, uh, it's called Chateau Hebrides. Uh, yes, they make a black muscat, which I imagine is probably quite sweet. Mm. And they only sell it locally in sort of like farmer's markets and what have you. But apparently it is drinkable, which is one, one thing. But there's another guy in uh, Fife, I think. Uh, hang on, I've got to look him up. Chateau Lago. Who Chateau Lago, L A R G O, who went live in 2015, um, and by all accounts, it was completely undrinkable. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a shame. But he's that's still trying, and I don't know the latest. He is still trying, and arguably things are going to get easier, which is what you were just about to say. It's all about the weather, isn't it? Yeah. And um, actually, I'm just looking at what a few people are drinking here. So. Camel Valley and Chapel Down, the wrong contras. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke Port now, three choirs, Blanc de Noir. Okay, we like three choirs. Yeah, we do. We used to sell um, a couple of their wines. We don't do any more, not for any particular reason. We just evolved and developed and found we others. Found Will Davenport. Yeah, we found Will Davenport. And we'll <laughs> talk to you all about Davenport, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so in the last. So how many, sorry, how many, how many English vineyards? 450. To 17 Wales to a, a, spattering, a handful in Scotland. Spattering of Scotland. And now, like, just to give you an idea of production in in this these home nations, um, in 2014, so only six years ago, we were only making about six million bottles. Um, now that last year was up to about 16 million. Yeah. So that is a massive increase. Yeah. In May 2019 alone, there were three million vines planted. Yeah. additional to the existing. So, yeah. you know, this industry is going to boom in a sort of British, quiet and sophisticated way. Right, conservative <laughs> manner. But so just, again, a bit of perspective here. So 16 million bottles produced in England. Um, we consume more than that in a year. Yeah. Considerably it's, more. It's true. I mean, we consume about 820 million bottles. So, yeah. And compare it to... French production, which is about six billion bottles per year. So we're really very, very dinky. And um, arguably one of the reasons why the government doesn't really take the wine industry particularly, um, well, it takes it with a pinch of salt, to be honest. <laughs> and they don't get, we don't get any government grants over here because it doesn't form part of the GDP. Um, whereas the, you know, the French, the Spanish and the Europe, the, that the majority of European um, fine growing nations do because it forms a considerable part of their mm -hmm. economy. This country, it doesn't. So uh, that is one of the reasons why English wine is expensive. We'll and, come on to that as well. Um, now we are, the, the Davenport wine, which we sort of suggested and we wanted to drink this evening because it's lovely and we don't drink it very often. Um, it's a still wine, you would notice. And mm. most people probably think of the UK's wine market as sparkling. Um, or gin and tonic, as Sarah White. Yeah, I know, I know. Somebody, uh, I knew somebody would do that. <laughs> but it is English, so Proper we'll give it that. Good English tradition, quite um, right. But yeah, so it's seventy percent or seventy-eight percent sparkling mm. production in this country, yeah. and only much smaller amount of um, uh, still. Wine. still. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to pop a little photo up, and you can <gasps> talk about love a photo. <laughs> I know, get the tech going. Let's get a photo up, and you can talk about why. Well, this will give it away, but. Why sparkling has kind of kind of kicked off first here in this country. But so, it's the white gifts of Dover. No, no points. A for, tear in my eye. <laughs> no points for guessing the location of this photo. However, uh, it is across a very interesting cross section of land. It is mm -hmm. nice, not very nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So some of you might have heard me talk about this, but um, there is a reason why England is producing fabulous sparkling wines. We're not allowed to call them champagne, but to all intents and purposes, that's exactly what they are, made in exactly the same way as champagne. Um, but the appeal, and particularly for some of the champagne producers who are now, you know, beginning to sort of buy up land in the UK, um, in the, particularly in the South, is because there is a seam of chalk which runs all the way from the champagne region 
all the way through to the west coast of Scotland, all the way through Dover, through Kent, through Sussex, and pretty much all the way down to Cornwall. And so we're literally sharing exactly the same seam of chalk across the across the south of Britain, south of England, um, with champagne. So what was missing previously was the weather. But of course, as we've all experienced in the last three months, so the sun since tans, March the twenty yeah. third, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the sun hasn't stopped shining. I mean, it's literally it's been blazing, and this is fabulous for the growing season because it's the growing season which is the most important bit um there you know there is an argument that you can't go too high in terms of latitude um and this is why scotland struggles it's just too high and it doesn't mm -hmm. get the growing season but again even up there it's changing and there's still sort of you know such suggestions that the even the welsh uh you know rainy old wales <laughs> they are going to potentially double their production in the next 10 years so um, maybe a good investment opportunity, snap up a bit of south facing sort of slightly higher than wet yeah, yeah. land in Wales or Scotland. Yeah. Perhaps. So the thing about um, lower climates and sort of rain and what have you is it does tend to produce quite a lot of acidity in your wines. So English sparkling wine tends to be a little or has historically tends to be a little bit more acidic than, say, the Champagne region. But again, things are changing uh and they also practice malolactic fermentation which is a, a secondary Techie. fermentation where you you convert the malic acids into lactic much more appealing malic is the apple acids into lactic milky acids um so it softens the wine but fundamentally fundamentally again much closer to champagne mm -hmm. than, than, than than to sort of like you know paint strippery so actually that, that's quite a good point for me to turn around and say to the masses what are the two main grape varieties grown in this country do we think okay put it out there oh yeah two good question. main grape varieties i mean there's an awful lot of different grape varieties grown um but we're going for what are the two main varieties do you oh, think oh. um no prizes for this just the kudos of getting it right and i see we have a, another port now joining us this evening good evening beth and port now welcome welcome um, um Steve Steve Ronconcha has just made a good point here. And so they came across an excellent Welsh winery a few years ago, Anchor Wine. Uh -huh. So uh, um I think possibly they might be called Anchor Hills, but yeah, we considered um stocking them at one point because they really are fantastic. And I'm I believe they're a biodynamic vineyard, they're certainly organic. The, the um, reason why we couldn't was the production was so minuscule, we just couldn't get enough stock. Couldn't get very much, and it was bloody expensive. For Luke all. Portnell's come oh. in with the correct <laughs> great varieties don't again. Don't say what they are, just in case people are kind of lagging behind on the uh, yeah, so we're asking web speed. What are the major two great varieties used or produced in the UK? Yeah, two major great varieties grown, I yes, guess. Grown. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is now a good time to mention the subject of this because we're very specific at saying this is about English, Welsh, Scottish, but not British. Yeah. Now, why is that, Pam? Well, do you know what? I was walking up with my mum this week, this afternoon, and I was telling her exactly the same thing. And she asked me, she's from Scotland. And she said, for goodness sake, it's all British. Well, it is all British. <laughs> it is all British. However, if you get a label, if you see a wine in the shop uh, with a label that states British wine, then the likelihood is that the grapes were not grown in the UK, anywhere in the UK. So it may have been made in Britain, but with grapes grown from anywhere, literally anywhere. So the grapes have been imported. Um, it might even it might either be the grapes or even the grape must. Um, it's really very, very low level wine and it's not considered to be proper wine. So just when you said the great musks, what, just expand on that. What do you mean by that? Crushed. Literally so crushed pulp. into, yeah. Have they already great used juice. the first juice? Or no, it's no, just literally. Still on the skins? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as Steve has just said, it's like British sherry. Yes, I'm very much so. Correct. So just to, to reiterate that, reiterate that so this wine here, Davenport, uh, Davenport Vineyards, it doesn't actually even say England. It says on the bottle, Produced and bottled at Davenport Vineyards, Rotherfield, East Sussex, UK. It is an English wine. Yes, it's British, but it's produced in England by an English vineyard using English grapes. 
So British wine can be can be Brit a British a, a, a wine with a label that states British wine is grapes that are imported from anywhere other than the UK. I think a good example of that isn't it Stoles. Stoles. Stoles is one that everyone must have seen. I mean, you don't associate it necessarily with quality. I think they've got a little bit better. Have they? Yeah, yeah you don't necessarily associate it with quality, but they Stoles are. Stoles Chelsea. They're a British. Oh, it takes wine. me back. <laughs> You've probably all heard. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So Did we get the answer. The yes. two. We've only had one guess, so maybe we should give the answer. But we were asking yes. what the two main grape varieties grown in this country are, and the answer is Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. The main grapes in Champagne, so unsurprisingly, and sparkling wine and sparkling wine. Sorry, yeah. and unsurprisingly, the third uh, is Pinot Meunier, which is also the third Champagne grape. And that is because we're producing more sparkling wine in the country than than still wines. Exactly. About what was the seventy-eight twenty-two? Seventy-eight percent of everything that is produced in England. I'll just say England for the time being. Yeah. Is, is sparkling okay. wine, yeah. So here's my next question. Bear with me while I get my picture up because here is a question coming. So um, uh, the next most widely grown grape variety is named after this chap. Oh, who knows who this is? I might say at the top, don't look too closely. Just don't read it. Just tell me who it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some well, really... You, yeah. Go on, go on. No, 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 no. Well, whilst you're thinking about that, I mean, I, you know... Well, if you don't know the answer to this question, then, uh, well, if I didn't know the answer to this question, I might as well just walk off a plank. And well, yeah, exactly. You were born <laughs> in this world. Um, the, just to give you a nudge, uh, he is the Roman god of essentially sort of wine, agriculture, fertility, but known. There we go. The there we go. Bacchus. That's him. <laughs> Bacchus, Bacchus. Of course he is. He's dousing grapes. So there he is, yeah. So Bacchus is the fourth most widely grown grape variety, but only accounts for about 7%. Although it's one of the, it, it, it is the main still grape variety, isn't it? Or is that Sigarib? Uh, well, actually, if it's the fourth main grape variety, the other three is sparkling. Let's go yes. Go on then. Let's go yes. Somebody can prove us wrong. Um, and it is one of the grapes in this um, Davenport wine. Yeah. So the, the Davenport wine that we're all tasting, or that some of us are tasting, which I just like mm. to say is absolutely stunningly delicious. It's the 2018 vintage. Um, it's only 11.5%. Mm. So... It's really delicate on the alcohol. Chin, chin. You can drink loads uh, on a Sunday evening. Um, the grapes are Bacchus, Ortega, Sigariba, Huxoreba, and Faber. Very good. Now, Round of have course. you heard of any of these apart from the old Roman god of grapes or wine? To be honest, you really don't need to. That's the winemaker's job. He's done a fantastic um, blend here. And... Um, we haven't really talked about it, but Will Davenport. Um, I'll get my next picture whilst Will speaking. Davenport started uh, his winery is in East Sussex, um, but he actually has vineyards in Kent. Uh, his first vintage, I think, was 1991, so really not an awful long time ago. And that is his pooch, Marvin. Oh, marvelous Marv. That's the Davenport. Um, the winery dog. The winery dog mm -hmm. called Marvin. He's a cutie pie. Um, so they've been producing great producing wine since 1991. So you know, nearly 30 years, I suppose. Yeah. Not long, not long in wine terms. Um, and I know people have mentioned Chapel Down and what was the other one they mentioned? Three choirs. Three choirs. Mm -hmm. Three choirs and Chapel Down are two of the really established wineries in England. And do you know what? They know what they're doing. They're not mucky about. They've got the established established ways of working. They've got expertise in there, and they're reliable. I mean, I I know that you know when I years and years ago when I was start, starting out in the wine industry and I was working for the Conran Restaurant Group, we were buying Chapel Down Sparkling as the alternative, as the alternative um, pouring sparkling uh, to 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 the the uh, house champagne, mm -hmm. and it was costing like. I don't know, three quid a bottle or something. It's considerably more expensive than that now. Um, but they are tried and tested and they know what they're doing. But as you mentioned, there's 300 or 400, 450. 450 wineries just in England. And really, just like France, just like Italy, there's the good, the bad, and the really ugly. And when it gets ugly in England, it really gets ugly. And a good point. Luke's <laughs> just said Simon and himself had a very uh experience yeah. with Seagreeber last night for three choirs. Yeah. It's, uh, it's hit and miss. We, were, we had a lady come up 
to the office one day. She wanted to show us some wine. She was coming from an English winery. Um, oh. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> we won't name and shame, but I can't remember what it was. But um, she arrived with these wines and it was... So excited she was mm, to show us her English wines. But really what she was doing was, was trying to shift some bin ends, which was a bad start. Yeah. And there was a sort of 2015 rosé, scary rosé. It's gone and, orange. And yeah, wines that really weren't made to age. Like this, this wine, you know, one or two years. Yeah. It'll change over that period. Yeah. And will still be good. Yeah. But it's not made to to lay down. No, it doesn't, it doesn't need, need to. to. No, it doesn't it's, need to. It's, it's drinking fresh. now. It's fresh now. And actually, we also haven't mentioned that Will Davenport's vineyards were the first to go organic in the UK. Yeah. Which is an enormous achievement. And again, bear in mind, he's only been making wine since 1991. So this is 100% organic, coming out of organic vineyards, organic winery, um, clean as a whistle, mm -hmm. super duper, and you're getting flavour. If you were blindfolded, you wouldn't have a clue that this came from England. Not that you would know where anything You'd came from. You'd probably guess kind of Alsace or something because it's really? got the lovely sulky ripeness. Yeah, ar aromatics about oh. it. Oh. Um, and that, oh, actually, this question just coming from Tim Carter asking what how we rate Denbys. Now, for those of you who don't know exactly where we are, we're based in sort of London, southwest London, Surrey. Denbys being our closest proximity vineyard which is a big setup it's a it's a big operation yeah um it's i remember when it was built oh do you yeah i do remember when it was built so uh denby's uh ah, denby's is an interesting one um you know when they when they first set up actually they they gained a reputation for pudding wines and by and large they're pretty good at pudding wines um but then, unfortunately, they went through a series of different winemakers and they kind of like shifted focus. And now their focus seems to be more on their gift shop uh, and getting the train ready. and oh, the train. They've got a train. Um, but my test, actually, was to see what's going on in the English vineyards is to take a trip to Denby's and literally drive up the driveway and look at the vines. Uh, and I remember everybody knows, you know, two years ago, the, the weather was last year was beautiful. But the year before, it was even more stunning. And I've gone up those those that driveway in previous years and seen vines with not a single berry on them. And two years ago, these vines were laden with red mm. grapes, which I imagine I'm not really sure what they were. Um, you know, well, probably. And uh, it was it was phenomenal to see. But. Well, you know, we need to get up. We, we, we actually did look at actually bringing some Denbys in at one point, but unfortunately they've got a bit of a contract with uh, Waitrose and they, they don't produce an awful lot, mm. but they tend to love to sell it through Waitrose. And so. And actually I've got some quite, this is a good point. We, we often get asked about English wine and, and, and I often sort of nudge people towards going and doing the, the wine route and going and visiting the wineries. And, and the, interestingly in this, in this country keeps, keeps spilling. Um, about 50% of the wines were produced here are sold to trade, so to yeah. kind of uh, retailers and on trade, so people selling in restaurants, etc. previously. Um, I'm having a bit more. 30, go for it. Oh, my <laughs> glass is ready to be charged as well. 30% um, of all the wine, or 32% it was, all the wine produced in this country is sold at the cellar door. So that is you rocking up to Denby's, getting on the train, going around the vineyard, and then going, I'll have a case of that, have a case of that. Yeah. Getting home and going, oh, I thought it tastes better than that. <laughs> um, but no, 30% of the cellar door is a huge amount. Yeah. And then only 6% is sold online. Ooh. Very small amount. So you're looking at really the experiential experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Of going to the vineyard and seeing it, doing the tasting, buying into the people and, and enjoying the occasion and picking up a few cases yeah is really the way people are buying their wine yeah um then a few people are buying it online but really uh the vast majority is on trade i guess and the cellar door stuff yeah. but um and then the other thing that has to be said um is that there is an export we do have an export market oh careful <laughs> nearly fell off his chair um can you believe we've got an export market thing? um so we export around about eight percent of all of the wines produced in this country um and so i much say again eight so, none of us were paying know, attention sorry <laughs> so eight percent of the wines produced in this country are exported mostly bubbly and the big export markets are oh no i won't ask you let's ask these guys where, where in the world do you think 
there's a few different countries, but where do you think buys the most or has biggest interest in importing wine from this country? Oh, do you know what? I don't think I know. I don't think I know. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, then you can guess too, but let, okay. let the people guess first. Okay. Um, I love that people are enjoying the Davenport because it really does have an amazing like nose. If you put, swill it around and put your nose in there, that is just lovely. Yeah, now I keep, I keep banging on about this recently, actually, because the importance of actually swirling the wine around in your mouth, because I've just noticed that it's so easy to just like swallow it. Just in it goes, swallow, and it doesn't even touch the mm. sides. And really, there's no appreciation in a glass of wine unless you just swill it around your mouth and really experience the, mm. the flavours and the characteristics. So don't be afraid. Um, just get swilling. That's what Make I'm it saying. noisy. Mm. Actually, it has to be said, we've, um, we've been doing quite a lot of Zoom tastings recently, mm. um, whether they're corporate or home tastings. Mm. And um, we'll bang on a bit about the best ways to taste wines, how to get the most out of releasing the aromas, why you need to decant wines, which wines you should decant, mm. which you should keep longer. Mm. Um, so if anyone's interested in, in having a Zoom tasting for their friends or family, um, then give us a shout and we can let you know a little bit more about that. Or even their businesses. On uh, I think on Friday evening we have people uh, tuning in on, via Zoom on uh, from uh, Berlin. Yes, and it's Amsterdam. an international affair these uh, days. And that's the beauty of Zoom, in actual <laughs> fact. They all get their wine, so we deliver all the wine direct to each individual household ahead of the event mm -hmm. and uh, then we all sit back and relax and of course the difference with Zoom and what's happening is here that you you get to talk to us and we, can, get, we get to see you. Yeah and you get to interrupt us. Yes, you <laughs> interrupt you us. <laughs> However there's some really good guesses coming through uh, in answer to my question. Yeah. Um, so the USA actually yeah rightly so is That's a big That's what I was going to say Kerry Steele. Yes well done. It's a big export market. Um, Iceland. Also, <laughs> also Scandinavia so the people said Norway, Poland's not a million miles away, but I don't think we can give it to Suzanne, I'm afraid. Um, and then Japan, actually, interestingly. Yeah. So Interesting. they're kind of the big export markets um, because people love the whole British brand, don't they? Yeah, Whack they a do. union jack on the label and Grand Bretagne and you're away. Do. Of course they do, of course they do. <laughs> um, and I, I, I was going to talk about, uh, what was I going to talk about? I was going to talk about this wine actually. I know that we've just mentioned the the the, the blend. Um, majority is Bacchus, but the nice thing that they've done with this wine is that it's, it's been aged for a little longer in um, in huge barrels. So a standard French barrique holds about two hundred and twenty five liters, but these are called foudre, which are the huge ones that actually, if you stand up, they're even they're still a, they're even taller than you. And so they impart a little bit of woody character, but really, really, really minuscule. But there is something, there's, there's something to, that those, those, those food or the massive great barrels do to the softness of this wine. They just make mm. it nice and easy. So it's more textural, like yeah. it's not oaky in any way, no. is it? Not at all. There's no, 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 um, no Which way. is the beauty of it. But that's the so one thing about the wine making. It? What would we eat with it? Ah, so um, I'm rather enjoying it on its own, to be honest. Well, we haven't got any food, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would go down the salmon route again because of that lovely oiliness of salmon with mm. the soft, and it's almost slightly oily, isn't it? It's got a sort of a slight viscosity. It's it's a creaminess. Yeah. So I think salmon would go really well. Yeah, or a, or a nice white fish. Simple. Something simple. Yeah. Not yeah. teriyaki salmon. No, that's too much. That's yeah. too much. Something easy, pan fried, a little bit of butter, bish bash bosh. Yeah. Or down if you're going down the canapé route. Um yeah, a little bit of even smoke some blini, you know. Yeah. No horseradish, I don't think. Just a nice gentle no with a little and dill, i think that's what this mayo. is all about it's just nice and gentle um just we're so, going to mention before you just because we're on the food and wine thing yeah um today i have finally perfected the canapes for thursday's lebanese night oh yes um mm. so our, our thursday is lebanese night we're going to be tasting our lovely chateau cassara red and white yeah which are phenomenally good wines and if you have ever heard of or tasted chateau moussa this is going to save you a fortune because they're so much more affordable and are just fantastic. So I've just perfected the canapes today and they'll be up on the website tomorrow. And I'm preparing my best question ever. Oh, for, for then? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, Shoot. yeah, yeah. You've got to tune in. You've got to tune yeah, in. I thought it was going to come out now. But um, the canapes are really easy. The There's uh, some Lebanese kind of spring rolls, which 
you just need to try and find the frozen the frozen spring roll wrappers because it makes life a lot easier but you can do it with phyllo it's just not as easy yeah um and then it's for the white it's a kind of uh roast toasted pine nut hummus um with some za'atar when it was pitters. very nice but tasted it earlier on so easy like i just made the both sets in about half an hour yeah. uh, and that was with inventing as well and tasting so yeah. um canapes will be up make sure you get all your wines in advance as well because we have plenty of time to deliver them but the more time you give us the less we have to run around like mad people getting everyone their wines yeah um, the wines are on the website they're the only two Lebanon lebanese wines we've got but also you'll want to snap up the orange wine which is for Sunday, because Orange. Sunday is Orange is a day. venture into the next dimension, isn't it? <laughs> Red, white, rosé, sparkling, sweet. Orange. Orange. And it's a real mind-blowing experience. Mind-blowing experience, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone's looking forward to Flying the Lebanese Flying by the seat of all pants, as usual. <laughs> Orange wine, don't miss it. Go on, so, it's great, it's great. Just going back Sorry. to English still wine again, mm. just for a moment, just to finish off. So, um... The reason historically that you see all these sort of crazy, crazy sort of Germanic grape varieties is because those are the vines, those are the grapes that actually um, were suited best to our climate at the, in the day. Now, Bacchus was an English, is an English grape variety, which was created in England for England um, not that long ago, actually. I think it was in the early 2000s. So it hasn't been around for an awful long time. Um, but um, do you get, questions are, do you get, Chardonnay, Sauvignon, uh, Chenin Blanc. Are those grape varieties produced in the UK? Well, the only place that we've seen them grown in the UK are under greenhouses. Um, oh, yes. And again, yeah. again, because they just don't, or well, they didn't, they didn't, because again, the climate's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. They just didn't sit comfortably in our climate. Um, Maybe they will. Maybe they'll take. Maybe they'll pull the greenhouse down and start growing them successfully. Well, I, I think know. we'll find that there'll be loads of grape varieties moving in, and, yeah. and similarly in the south of France, where it's getting hotter and hotter, and will soon become a desert. Yeah, they'll have to change what they're yeah. planting there as well. Yeah. Won't they? So then, moving swiftly onto the sparkling thing. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So some of the best sparkling wines in the world now are coming from England. Uh, I know somebody mentioned Nightingale, which is up there with the top of the tops queen drinks it and uh, there are all sorts of really good ones um i'm not going to mention too many of them now well, let's Ex mention we do. Davenport. davenport do an excellent sparkling and a sparkling rosé yeah really uh, lovely which i'm not sure whether it's on the website it will be on the website tomorrow so go to hannibalbrown.com and have a look at just look up davenport and they should come up but not too early, please, because we've got to put them on the system tomorrow morning. Yeah, and it's busy days these days. Um, and they are positioned price-wise as expensively, if not more expensively, than champagne, which is mm. quite controversial, quite controversial, because some of them definitely deserve to be up there, and sadly, others don't. Um, so it really is, you know, if, you, if, if, if you're a sparkling wine fan, do your, do your homework first. Mm. Don't just go blindly down the route. Oh, it's got to be English. Oh, the climate is getting better. It's got to be good. Um, because there's still quite a lot of wineries out there that don't really know what they're doing. I suppose it's, it's got to be said that it actually uh, basically costs the same amount to produce a really crap bottle of sparkling wine as it does to produce a good one. It just depends on how it's being made. So yeah. they might well have the same price tag, but it certainly doesn't mean price equals quality yeah anywhere in wine i mean yeah. everybody probably knows that i mean yeah. there are rules you can follow but if you want any advice give us a shout we do bang the jump of davenport because they're organic they were the first organic vineyard you can't go and visit actually i noticed there was a question can you go and visit and stay they don't actually have a sort of cellar door operation there it is purely they really sell to trade to sell on yeah. um if, but you, they if, do you want, well. if you want somewhere really nice to go to to visit and stay they've got a restaurant they've got accommodation Three Quires, which is about five yeah. kilometers, five kilometers west of Gloucester, Gloucester the city. Mm -hmm. um, it's lovely, really lovely. We went actually in the in the dead of winter, and it was still really lovely. Um, anyway, my last thing, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bang on go about on, this, just on. because the sun is shining, and people got to get, get, really got to appreciate why this is taking, having a massive effect on on English winemaking. Um, two years ago, remember 2018, the Fabulous sun, summer. Well, 2018. up until that point, uh, 
Britain or the UK or England, I should say, England was producing por probably a third of the quantity that was produced in the Champagne region. Now, bear in mind, Champagne is restricted. So it's a big region, but it's restricted growing and they're at capacity. So they can't grow anymore. So this is why they're looking for other land. Mm -hmm. uh, but so two years ago, uh, or sorry, I should say three years ago, but in 2018, the weather was so good and so favorable for winemaking that actually England's production was on a par with champagne. So Ooh. phenomenal, phenomenal. And it's going to be amazing to see what happens. That 2018 vintage, it won't be ready yet. Uh, at least not another long. year, yeah, at least long. another year before it comes on stream. And I'm hoping that people are going to declare that vintage rather than just create a blend. But surely, we will see. You've got to look out enough. for 2018 vintage but you're going to have to wait another year to 18 months or something yeah. before, before you see it. And it will be good. It will be good. I just want to um, Hello, mention, Isabel has just mentioned Palestin uh, Otolenghi. Palestine! We, uh, so we know Isabel from Hay Festival, and we've talked about this before. Evening, we should be at Hay Festival now. Oh, in fact, it will just be the finishing event. We'll be wrapping um, up this evening. In fact, if I reach down here, it wasn't this, but I'm just going to point out, I'm a big fan of Otolenghi, so I've got <laughs> Jerusalem and I will be buying the cookbook. But um, it was in uh, Hay last year that I went to an event, I think it was on the Sunday, and listened to a couple. I thought I was just going to listen to them talk, but actually they did a cookery demo live in the BBC tent. Um, and it was the couple, and I should know their names, I, I would have thought about this in advance if I was going to say it, um, who own and started the Honey & Co restaurants. There's Honey & Co, Honey & Spice, Honey & Smoke, I think, which are all up in um, around Warren Street area in London. Um, and I saw them do their demonstration and I was kind of slightly sold and immediately came back and tried the recipes and have been kind of... Which is why you must like, click in on Thursday evening yeah, yeah, for Lebanese Yeah, because it's, I mean, obviously, obviously we're talking is Israel and Palestine from, for Otolenghi, but, but yeah, Lebanese, all of that, those Eastern countries just produce some lovely food, with big, big flavours, but doesn't have to be big chilli heat. So no. if you're not a chilli heat person... Don't yeah, worry, you, this is a flavour and, um, you know, spice and herbs. Yeah. It's just brilliant. So I, right. can't, I can't wait for Thursday. Okay, right. I'm shutting you up now because okay. I'm, I'm going to talk. I want to know, I want to know, Jude, what is your wine of the week? Oh, okay. So we had, we well, don't want you guys to get the idea that we're drinking every night. We're not, but we do have to do these, do a lot of tastings and we can't just sit here with a glass of water. <laughs> so we had a really lovely Chinon Blanc from one of our producers, Blockhead Estate. It's under ten pounds a bottle, and it's just lovely. Mm, it's just very good. lovely, and I haven't had it for a wee while. Yeah, and and it was just one of those. Oh yes, I remember why we had that as our house wine for so long. Yeah, because it's just so good. So have yeah. a look, Blockhead Estate Chenin Blanc mm. for a nice, soft, easy drinking glass of wine. Very good, lovely. Very What's good. yours? Mine is a relatively new wine that we haven't had for very long. It's a Gruner Veltliner from Austria. Um from Ulram, A-L-L-R-A-M. Oh, yes. And I really like it. We had a previous Gruner and uh, unfortunately no longer produce it. Um, but the Ulram was a bit of a find because it's it's cheaper than the last one, for one thing. And um, Stunning. I mean, not, not to be said that I'm actually taken by the beauty of its bottle, but its bottle is about this high, beautifully slick. <laughs> but actually, oh, yeah. I love it. I think mm. so. But my wine of the moment... Da, da, da. Well, I've got two wines at the moment. Are we allowed to? I was only, I, had, I got shut up on my Lebanese cookery. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wine at the moment is probably what everybody's oh, drinking at the here's moment. Here's what I made here's earlier. Dun, 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 our lovely Chateau d'Olier, which is going great yeah. guns. Yeah. Absolutely great guns. Um, so this is the rosé for the summer for everybody. It's $13.99 and worth every single penny. We're converting customers left, right, and center from other extraordinarily more expensive rosés. The um, Spring Angel, namely. Ooh, yeah. Um, but this, God, if you haven't tried it, try it. And, and our news this week, actually, is we are now supplying the wines to Westside Tennis Club in Wimbledon. Oh, yeah. Um, so if new, anybody's got adventure. a tennis club who uh, are, are able to put your bar outside during the lockdown um, and they need some decent wine supply to them, then give us a shout. Hannibalround.com. Chateau d'Olier. Very good. Very yeah. good. So um, just a little recap. Yeah. Um, you might have realised that on Thursday it's Lebanese night. <laughs> 
Um, the Lebanese wines are on the website. Purchase them. We'll cool. get them to you in well and good time. Make the canapes. Matches made in heaven. Yeah. Um, Sunday, it's a new dimension with orange wine. Scary. It's, it's the, scary. <laughs> the orange wine we've chosen is the the less scary end of the scale. Yeah. Um, it's around about fifteen pounds a bottle. It's not the cheapest bottle of wine, but it's really interesting. And I, you know, branch out. Open your mind and join us. And if you've got a daisy, just put it in your mouth and go, ooh, ah, it's orange, ooh, ah. Okay, Pam needs to be convinced a bit on these, but it's really good. And it's a real, it's a, think of it as an educational, but still delicious experience, yeah. as always. And then something for everybody to remember, remember, remember the 21st Father's Day. They will not forgive you if you don't get them a bottle of personalised wine from Hannibal Brown. .com. With a picture of your loved one on it. Yeah. Look at the back. Yeah. So personalized wine design, a little shout out. It's on our other website. Mm -hmm. it's all, you can go to Handle Brown. You'll find your way. Personalizedwinedesign.co.uk. Mm -hmm. Design right. your own nice. label. Produce sort of special bottle of wine for Father's Day. So that's that. Um, and one other point, I suppose there's going to be a lot of birthdays still happening for these poor people who are celebrating during lockdown. Was it happy birthday to you? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, well they don't want to be sung to just for people washing their hands. Um, but have a look at our DIY wine tasting kits as well, because it's a really fun way to have a fun evening drinking wine with your family. Thin way, just we're nearly, done. we're nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, he's only got an attention span of 10 minutes, so this is really rather good. Um, so DIY wine tasting kits, uh, join us for the tastings, get your rosé orders in because the sun's going to still be shining and it yeah. is lovely. Yeah. Um, and the Orum think, Gruner Veltliner. Orum Gruner Veltliner and for a more house uh, entry level, Blockhead Chinan Blanc. All delicious, all lovely. Jump and on. And don't buy British wine. Yeah, not British. English, Welsh or Scottish, but not British. <laughs> um, and I think we'll leave you Is with it that. Is it a wrap? We'll leave you with that. So thank you everyone for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed the wine. Hope you've been sort of learned a little bit about the English, Welsh, Brit Scottish wine industries. Um, hope everyone does get stuck into a bit because it is good stuff. <laughs> and uh, Luke has pointed out that orange wine isn't always that scary. Pal. Oh, it is. So, it is, it no, is. No, 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 it's not. So we really look forward to seeing you all on Thursday. Get Thanks in touch if there's anything we can do. And um, please share, please share, please share. Get all your friends on this uh, and we'll keep doing these for as long as uh, as long as you're interested. As long as Finn will sit there. Okay, right. Bye, That's everybody. It. Bye, Take care. Bye, y'all. Take care. Cheerio. Yeah, fences. Cheerio, too. Bye, bye.